10 years ago, the Injustice Society defeats the Justice Society of America. Pat and Starman barely escape with their lives until he doesn't. Courtney lives in Blue Valley with her mom Barbara, stepdad Pat, and stepbrother Mike. He stops right on the crosswalk to drop her off. She meets her co-stars Beth, Rick, and Yolanda at the loser's table. That night, she finds the cosmic staff, and after using it to blow up a car, Pat tells her he was Starman's sidekick. Courtney thinks Starman might be her father because he also disappeared that Christmas night, but her dad's name was Sam, and Starman's real name is Sylvester. After finding out about the car incident, Brainwave opens his creepy closet and battles Stargirl, but she blows him up and Pat reveals his costume. The open house is the perfect opportunity for Brainwave to find the identity of the Star Girl by slowly using his telepathy on one person at a time. He eventually finds and blackmails her into handing over the staff, but she hands him a coma instead. Court learns Icicle is the leader of the ISA as Jordan McKent attends a meeting in a secret hideout with Mr. Sharp. Jordan has a kid named Cameron and he returns to the company where Barbara is working at. Star Girl and Icicle have their first encounter, but he gets punched onto a bridge. Courtney heads back into the JSA headquarters to borrow a few items. Yolanda and Henry used to be together, and she was quite popular until everyone found out you haven't subscribed. The hallway is basically empty, but they still run into each other. Court thinks she can cheer her up and goes, you wanna see how I blew up a car? And hands her Wildcat's costume. They visit Brainwave in the hospital because other ISA members could be there. And just like that, they find Principal Bowen passionately playing the violin. Unfortunately, they're spotted on the way out. Rick's parents disappeared nine years ago, but they didn't get very far. He's all grown up now, sort of, and he's angry all the time. He bumps into the main characters and the hourglass starts glowing. Beth kind of just shows up at the house and puts on the goggles where she's introduced to an AI of Dr. Midnight, who she calls Chuck. The hourglass that gives superhuman strength doesn't do it for him, but she plays them footage of the crash that night, revealing it was Solomon Grundy. Not sure who recorded it, but it works instantly, and he goes, oh, okay, I'll I'll join you now. To prove these are the bad guys, the Fiddler and Mr. Sharp attacks the random trucker because that's what evil people do. Artemis plays a bit rough and gets benched, so her parents knock some sense into the coach. Mike does what every kid does for a science project, and Quentin Tarantino makes a guest appearance as he directs a few scenes. Rick asks Beth to help decipher his dad's journal, but all they learn is that the gambler is trying to hack into a satellite. They decide to go after him because what could possibly go wrong? Turns out, a lot because Sportsmaster and Tigress show up. Their inexperience and lack of teamwork almost gets them killed until they stand there dramatically, which scares them off. The janitor is getting a suspicious amount of screen time as the camera lingers on a sword. Henry's been developing powers like his dad, and during a test, he frantically looks around the room while listening to their thoughts and copies their answers. Clearly, the teacher doesn't get paid enough to do anything about it. Cindy returns home and enters a creepy tunnel where she tells her dad she doesn't want to babysit Henry because he doesn't have powers. Cameron asks her to the dance, but she's more interested in chasing Principal Bowen into a creepy tunnel, leading her to Cindy in full costume. The janitor saves her in the nick of time and recognizes Stripesy from afar. Henry discovers he can lift objects and unlocks the secret closet. The team decides they need to figure out who Cindy's parents are. They investigate her house and discover a creepy tunnel and a photo of the deceased Dr. Ito. Meanwhile, Cindy shows up at Courtney's house and goes, I know you're secret, but I won't tell anyone. She wants to make sure of that so they duke it out, but Henry distracts them with a massive headache and she's taken into the sewers, where they lock her in a cell. Henry tries out his powers on this guy as the real Henry wakes up. Pat tells her about his days before the JSA, when the Seven Soldiers of Victory defeated Dr. Ito. In the tunnels, Dr. Ito explains Project New America will brainwash the country. Barbara invites Jordan and his family over for dinner so that Courtney can figure out his secret identity. Because because he handles the hot plate like it's nothing, and Barbara finds out about the staff. Now they're on the verge of a divorce because she found a glowing staff, but she does some research on the work computer and immediately changes her mind. Henry finds out his mom was Starman's sister, and the rest of the team are reluctant to bring him on board. They head into the tunnels where half of them run into Solomon Grundy, and the other half battles Dragon King, but that's too scary for them so they try to make an escape. Brainwave catches them so Henry sacrifices himself 
himself to ensure their escape, and they pretend to care about him when they couldn't even stand the sight of him earlier. Her dad, Sam Curtis, magically shows up at the door and goes, Remember that locket I gave you? I could sell it for a lot of money, hint hint. And she's like, oh okay, here you go. The necklace meant a lot to her, so Pat gives him a good punch. Just then the janitor shows up with the sword. Turns out he's been brainwashed and doesn't remember he used to be the leader of the seven soldiers of victory. Jordan hacks into the computer, and that's why you should never use a work computer for personal use. Pat helps Rick to decipher the journal, revealing a map of the tunnel system. And to raise the stakes, because they're so low I don't feel anything, if people try to fight against the mind control, they could die. And I just got news that Principal Bowen won't be in the next season. All the good guys and bad guys fight it out, and obviously Stargirl wins as you can tell by the name of the show. Solomon Grundy gets loose and Rick finally has a shot at the revenge he wanted all season. Or not. Actually, he just lets him go. Brainwave uses cheap mind tricks, but Yolanda sees right through them. I guess he's not in the next season either. Star by Mind Control. To conclude the 13th episode, we get an epic showdown between Stargirl and Icicle, but he trips and gets run over. The Shade teases season 2 as Cindy finds Eclipso, and because we didn't actually see him die on screen, Sylvester is still alive. Cool show. Check out season 2. Bye.